This your host, Selah Shalom, and this is a Cosmon Teachings in the words of Jehovah and his angel ambassadors from the Cosmon Bible Owaspi. And the topic of discussion today is the Cosmogony and Prophecy Series Part 4, The Beginning of Our Heaven and Earth. Now, we are all familiar with the creation story in the Bible, how God created the heavens and the earth in six days or 6,000 years. But as I have proven through past documentaries that this creation story is false. But here in Owaspi, it will explain how planetary bodies are created. And these rules apply to all planetary bodies, only differing in size, shape, speed, and velocity. Again, as I have been saying, the vortex is the first cause of creation. The first thing to acknowledge is that the heavens and the earth could not exist without the sun's vortex. First. Another thing, the heavens and the earth could not exist without the vortex to support it. So before there was a heaven and earth... The vortex was in the process of gathering in the minerals to formulate the heavens and the earth. And when the minerals became condensed enough to manifest warmth, heat, and light, and shadow, it is called a comet. And even the comet resembles the sperm cell prior to its full development. Some comets' vortex are not strong enough to maintain its form, and they are dissipated back to a gas state, its original form. But if the comet's vortex is strong enough, it will continue to grow into a planet, as described again in the book of Jehovah. Chapter 4, verse 15 and 16. Verse 15. First, as vapor, the vortex carries it forth, and as it condenses, its friction engenders heat, and it is molten, becoming as a globe of fire in heaven. This is the first stage of all corporeal bodies, whether sun, planets, moon, stars, or comets. This is the formation for all of them, and it is at this state that it is a comet being a ball of fire in heaven, basically a sun, depending on, again, its size. Then it takes place as a newborn world, and I set it in the orbit prepared for it. So here, after it is a globe of fire, a comet, and receives its own orbit, it evolves into a planetary body, the same way the sperm cell evolves into a mortal body. Now, verse 16. In the next age, I bring it into Simu, for it is ripe for the bringing forth of living creatures, and I bestow the vegetable and animal kingdoms. So this verse describes how the planet is now inhabitable to support vegetation and life. So this is to show the function and growth of a planet from a vortex of vapor to a comet to a planet. Now, our earth is subjected to cycles of times and seasons. This is what the Bible does not tell you. Our earth goes through four ages, which can be compared to the four seasons, and the length of one age is 144,000 years. The first age is called the time of creation, which can be compared to the spring season of the earth, which lasts 144,000 years. The second age is called the inhabitable time for the living, which can be compared to the summer season of the earth, which lasts 144,000 years. The third age is called the time of barrenness, which can be compared to the fall season, which lasts 144,000 years. The fourth age is the time of rest, which can be compared to the winter season of the earth, which lasts 144,000 years. These four ages total to 576,000 years, which makes up what we call one garden. These same rules apply to every corporeal body, differing in years. So Mars may have 200,000 years for their ages, while we on earth have 144,000 years for our age, just as an example of how the rules are still the same, just differing in time. Now these four cycles repeat no different than how our four cycles repeat every year. Understanding this, you would come to the conclusion that the heavens and the earth have been created, inhabited, in barrenness, and destroyed several times over, exactly eight times according to the eight gardens which the eight gardens is the orbit of the solar system. So when we apply the four ages to our present time, it will be discovered that we are in the second age, the inhabitable time for the living on earth. So in the first age, it took our earth 144,000 years to be created from a vortex of vapor to a planet. 
suitable for living creatures in only 144,000 years, not the million years as popular belief. And being that we live in the inhabitable age of the planet, which is only 144,000 years, we are at the halfway point of our inhabitable time. And half of 144,000 years is 72,000 years, which is the time period mortals have been on the planet in this present garden. And this present garden is the seventh garden, but I'll explain that in another vid. And from the creation of the heavens, of the earth, to the present time, is 216,000 years, which would shock the world if they found out that the earth was so young. Many of you will flat out disbelieve it until you start understanding the timetables of prophecy and Jehovah's cycles, times, and seasons. So the mortal race is not even 100,000 years old, let alone a million years. We are very young to the planet, and the planet is very young, although popular belief say otherwise. And with that, I'd like to say peace and blessings and catch you on the next documentary called The Four Ages of the Earth, The True Creation Story. Shalom. In the art of man, John no dead, him no dead, him live on, on and on and on and on. Yeah, John no dead, him no dead, him live on.